Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now April 10th of 2020 and ever since the release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, a lot of fans have been very curious about the future of the Star Wars universe by Disney and Lucasfilm and exactly how they are really going to handle everything moving forward throughout this entire decade. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say here that by far, one of the fan favorite characters is of course Anakin Skywalker in the prequel trilogy films portrayed by Hayden Christensen. And of course, we heard his voice for a brief, you know, second or two in, of course, The Rise of Skywalker. Now, the thing about Disney Star Wars is that a lot of fans have been very upset with exactly how the last film of this massive saga was handled by Disney and how a lot of scenes were deleted because of Kathleen Kennedy intervening with the last minute decisions and the major reshoots and the rewrites that took place in two different phases, mind you, in 2018 and another in 2019 just last year. Now, with that being said, the thing about the character of Anakin Skywalker is that he was originally going to have a massive presence in this movie, and that was ultimately canceled because of Kathleen Kennedy. This once again just shows us that she's very incompetent over at Lucasfilm, poor leadership skills, and that's a given. And it doesn't really seem like that she really cares all that much about Star Wars. Now, what's really intriguing, of course, is that now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are finished with the Skywalker saga, they are focused on their new Star Wars trilogy of films as well as their new Star Wars universe. Currently, the new Disney CEO, Bob Chapek, is developing many plans in order to reunite the fans around the world, where Chapek is said to be promoting many of the creatives over at Lucasfilm, like Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, for example, to make key creative choices for the new Star Wars universe. However, it's noted that currently major retcons are coming out way for, of course, the Star Wars franchise in general. Now, it's noted that Disney CEO Bob Chapek has been working closely with Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau to make key creative choices for the new Star Wars universe. However, many fans have been wondering about what could have been for The Rise of Skywalker before Kathleen Kennedy stepped in to make major reshoots. Now, it's noted that behind the scenes as of now, Kathleen Kennedy has been very frustrated with her creative control being stripped away by Disney's new CEO Bob Chapek and that Kathleen Kennedy is very sorry and feels deep regret her firing Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker to appear as a force ghost in physical form since it had a major toll on the box office results for The Rise of Skywalker. It's noted that J.J. Abrams knew the return of Anakin would boost fans' interest in the film and would have even generated repeat viewings and that Kathleen Kennedy was sorry for letting go of Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker since it had a negative impact on the sequel trilogy movie itself in its entirety. Now, it's explained that a last-minute decision was made by Kathleen Kennedy after letting go of Hayden and refusing to bring him back on set, where once it was too late, Kathleen Kennedy realized that Anakin's presence matters deeply to the fans, and that so she decided to inform the sound engineers and the sound team in general to include Hayden's four-scale voice from one, of the, from one of the deleted scenes at last minute in order to save the film. However, it just wasn't enough to fans as Kennedy's request for Hayden's voice to appear would be altered to make him sound older. So that was the one, I guess you could say, critique among many fans is that when you listen to Hayden Christensen as a Force Ghost voice, it's hard to really pick up on it at first, at least at first, right? When you first see this movie, a lot of fans did not catch on who was who. Uh, of course, there were voices out there that really stood out, like, uh, for example, Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn, heard that right from the get-go, you know, we just know Qui-Gon's voice. Liam Neeson has got a very distinctive voice, so it makes it easier, but Hayden Christensen, pretty much, it felt like he was meshed together with the other Force Ghost voices, you know, like uh, Kanan Jarrus and others out there mixed in. Uh, that was my only, you know, big criticism, is how they handled the Jedi voices of the past. At one point in time, at least to me, all the voices just sound very similar. You know, the male voices I'm talking about. So, with that being said, what's really intriguing though is how Kathleen Kennedy has deep regret of letting go of Hayden Christensen and not allowing him to become a part of the final film, physically speaking, right? On a visual scale. Um, obviously, it's not a genuine, like, uh, apology per se, or it's not a genuine, uh, I guess you could say, regret that she's not actually sorry for the fans and what she actually did. 
It's more so that she's sorry because of the consequences upon her of making such a thing happen. Now that her power is stripped away, her creative control at least, she's still running things on the business end, mind you, but creative end, completely gone for Kathleen Kennedy, and you can see as to why she's reacting in such a way. So, like I've said before in the past, I mean, this movie was everything, it had so much more potential, and if Kathleen Kennedy did not interrupt with J.J. Abrams, I think that this movie really could have been something quite else. So, with that being said, guys, drop a comment below, let me know think about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.